Hello. Hello. How's it going? <sighs> it's been a while. And sorry for the bad audio quality. Uh, let me. Yeah, it's fucking bad. Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not at home, so I don't have my microphone. And yeah, it's a bit of an improvised stream today. So, how's it going? Yeah. As you can see, I al already started the thing where I uh, make the filter stuff and shit like yeah so we're gonna go over these it's basically it's basically just stuff that it's I don't know yeah we, so what what I want to do today is uh, basically well uh, as you can see I uh, I have for now a thing that lets you see what's the frequency response of the uh, a an RC filter uh, that has like a resistance of uh, 10k and a capacitance of 10 nanofarad and let's you see this curve and yeah I'm not gonna use uh, maybe what you are uh, used to like decibels per octave because that's not what I studied uh, filters uh, I, I didn't study a filters from a perspective of octaves but I studied um, I studied them uh, with like decades like uh, uh, like by 10 it uh, multiplication multiplication by 10 like 1 hertz 10 hertz is one decade 100 hertz is another decade 1k hertz is another decade and so on but yeah that there, there is a, there's a, a way to convert between decades and octaves i'm sure let me do a thing. The freaking dogs were loud. So, what is an RC filter? Well, an RC filter is a network that basically allows you to filter out uh, or maybe more accurately um, dampen some uh, frequency in a signal and you might be used to like a low pass filter like this and uh, let me see I pass filter RC filter like this this is the uh, high pass filter so <clears throat> you might um, uh, if you if you know a bit of uh, circuitry and stuff like that you might recognize uh, this arrangement to be really similar to what is called uh, a voltage divider let me voltage divider so okay ooh voltage divider rc why is that 
we we're, we're going to explore that so as you can see is really similar why because um, there's something called impedance and impedance is um, you might think uh, you you can think of it as the quote unquote complex uh, alternative to resistance. W what does what does that mean? I'm throwing terminology to you like that without any explanation. So let's just assume that you know that um um like th that you know that in order to analyze uh some uh circuitry you need to use complex numbers let's assume that because it's been a while and uh, it's it's been a while and i don't remember a lot of stuff from school and i only recently picked up a circuit analysis in order to make this tool here so what is a complex number let me open my trusty paint a complex number is a number that has a strange number in it and you might think that it's not a number but it is a complex number is one of the form of a plus b i and we call it z z or or w is usually the name that we do uh, assign to complex numbers and uh, i what is i i is the square root of negative one and the square root of a negative number doesn't exist however the fact that doesn't exist doesn't mean that it's not useful it's plenty useful in fact we basically live off complex numbers and and uh, their cousin or whatever called quaternions that are a really nice way to describe 3d rotations in an elegant way and a really simple way for computers to well for actually for programmers to program 3d rotations and stuff like that and yeah so basically why is that we need complex numbers in order to uh, analyze uh, an rc filter well because uh, um, i don't know if you ever um, encountered like something like uh, well, if, when you when you, for example look at um, uh, for example a speaker, you might find that it says on the back impedance equal uh, sixteen ohms, and you might you might think that ohms is the unit of measurement for uh, resistors, like for resistance, and uh, you will be right. But let me sneeze, okay. But uh, impedance is composed of as any uh, complex number of a real part plus an imaginary part, and the real part. In impedance is actually resistance 
and uh, resistance is okay. It's the real part of impedance, and the imaginary part for impedance it's called x. X is reactance. Reactance. What is it? Reactance is basically um, imaginary resistance, and we find we find it in capacitors and inductors. And we will fo will be focusing uh, into uh, capacitive reactance because uh, a low pass filter made with coils and inductors it's not cheap. So yeah, basically imaginary resistance. That was what what I said. <laughs> And yeah, I'm not a teacher. I just wanted to stream. <laughs> I was feeling lonely. <laughs> okay, so um, you might think. So what is uh, this reactant? And reactants, you can find uh, the reactants of a capacitor by uh, doing. <laughs> the Laplace transform of the I don't remember what, but basically you can and um, you might think what is the Laplace transform? But if I say Fourier transform, you might be ah yes I I know what a trans at least the name. I know the name of the Fourier transform, and basically, the Fourier transform is a particular case of the Laplace transform. That's what, as far as I remember from calculus and electronics that I studied three years ago. That's it. So, you can you can pretty much find like uh here uh like if you say uh, like um <laughs> uh laplace transform table uh electronics i don't know you can find um No. Um. Hmm. Okay. Yes. Here it is. Yeah. So basically, uh, that was the main impression. No, I don't care. So basically, you can find like Laplace domain behavior sheet. I don't remember a, a lot. Hello, Andre. And basically. Uh, 1 over SC is the Laplace transform of the, oh, yeah, 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 it's the Laplace transform of the, what is this? It's the uh, integral of the current, um, what was this? Is it the... Um, Is it? Oh, it's the Laplace transform of the uh, voltage expression. Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of, uh, let's assume that we all know what I'm talking about. Impedance, I said. So, and, um, so, one, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, uh, one over S C, and don't ask me what I what, what why S is I omega C. Why is I omega? But since we are engineers, we're not gonna use I, but instead we're gonna use J. Because I 
is already been used for current. So uh, we use another letter for the imaginary unit. And omega, yeah, omega fucking shit. Omega is the um, how do I say it in English? Is a pulsation in case no see. It's the pulse pulsation. I don't know. It's basically uh, two pi f. I don't remember why is. Is that what does it mean? Uh, 2 pi f. So, what do we have? What do uh, we know about <laughs> low pass filters so far? That calculating them through a tool, an online tool, is much, much more easier if you just care about filtering some frequencies but if you really want to go and design an actual working 100% working <laughs> low pass filter or high pass filter or whatever pass filter of whatever order you need to know a little bit of math and uh, a little bit of the context of the circuit. Where is it going? Where is the low path filter going? But we assume that we are fucking geniuses and we know everything. So, what to. Oh, Jesus Maria Zito. Ah, new schematic. So, uh, we will start with a, a low pass filter like resistor uh, and uh, uh, yeah yes yes just give me the, the fucking symbol and a capacitor uh, no or yes yeah 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 yeah, yeah, give me, give me. And uh, if we um, if we uh, convert these uh, C one into its equivalent, it's the uh, when uh, yeah, I don't know. I wish I was drunk actually, but yeah, whatever. So, uh, if we convert the capacitance into uh, capacitive reactance, we will find out that uh, it's basically um, the, the impedance of the uh, resistor would be like the value of the resistance because it it's constant, but the impedance of the of uh, C one here it's dependent on frequency. So you might think of this circuit as a variable voltage divider in which one of the resistors changes uh, based on. Uh, um, based on frequency, because as I uh, as I wrote before, the impedance of a capacitor is equal to one over J omega, which is uh, control Z, uh, which is two pi f and C. And since we have F here, we will find that these uh, the uh, the impedance of the capacitor 
dependent on frequency because it's here and also it's inversely proportional to frequency so uh, the bigger the frequency is uh, uh, the smaller the capacitance uh, the impedance is the smaller the frequency is the bigger the uh, impedance is and if we make an analogy with resistance it's basically uh, if f goes up the resistance goes down but this is an analogy this is not actually resistance so and uh, and uh, so uh, uh, to, 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 let me see so uh, what we have now it's basically if we convert the capacitor here into an impedance which has value of 1 over j omega c and the other impedance has value r uh, through a little bit of circuit analysis which let's assume that we all know also you can just google voltage divider formula which comes out as let me let me v in v out let me just v out is equal to uh, let, let's call it z2 and z1 let's call it uh, the the formula would be v in times uh, z2 divided by uh, z1 plus z2 this is the actual uh, the actual um, this is basically the ratio between the out voltage and the in voltage and this is called the transfer function this is the transfer function of the filter and uh, from this we can uh, calculate all this shit here this is basically uh, the, the the transfer function once uh, we uh, put in the values for resistance capacitance and frequency it's basically a complex number and we can calculate uh, its uh, uh, um, what's it called the modulus maybe but i don't know because in english modulus is I don't know, maybe it's the modulus and the argument. So, what is the modulus and the argument of a complex number? So, a complex number can be represented as a vector on a complex plane. Uh, and also, uh, the professor that I had called it the Gauss plane maybe I don't know uh, wait a minute Ooh. I'm back. So uh, we can uh, represent the uh, a a uh, complex number as a vector because, uh, as we discussed before, a complex number can be represented as a in this form like this is the 
real part real and this is the imaginary part blah, 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 whatever and this is the real axis and this is the imaginary axis so we can draw two perpendicular lines uh, perpendicular to the axis and we find that uh, this value is B and this value is A. So basically what we have here is a right, right angle, uh, right angle triangle, maybe. That's the name. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, we find that the vector makes with the real axis here uh, an angle we call it alpha and this is alpha and uh, uh, we find uh, the what, what I was saying before the modulus it's basically the length of the hypotenuse of these triangle here that has uh, the two sides one of length a and the other of length b this is p this is a yeah no yes no this is length a this is length b i i freaked up so uh, the as you might uh, recognize, uh, remember actually from school, the Pythagorean theorem says that the hypotenuse, the square uh, built on the hypotenuse, I don't know how to enunciate the theorem in English, I only know it in, in Italian, like C squared is equal to I squared plus B squared. The sum of the two squared built on the uh, sides of the triangle is equal to the uh, square on built on the hypotenuse. And since the hypotenuse is what we want to find, like the modulus of the complex number, we can just take the square root of this and I will write it like this because I'm I'm lazy and also the modulus of a complex number is uh, indicated by two straight lines and between the lines uh, we, we, we put the name of the of the, the complex number whatever we call it if we call it c we call it c and the argument here is the the angle between the real axis and the the the, the thing the, the 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 vector and uh, yeah and the the, <laughs> the angle alpha <laughs> Alpha is equal to the uh, arctangent of P over I A. Maybe, yeah, I don't remember actually, but yeah, just, <laughs> just, <laughs> just go with it. <laughs> so now that we don't know anything about imaginary numbers, uh, we just download a pre-made, pre-made by me, library that allows us to work with complex numbers and we just treat them as Z and W, Z1 and Z2 and whatever and just forget it 
I googled half half of the of the functions here in order to like the did you know that the real part of a cos the cosine of a complex number is basically the cosine of the real part of the of the complex number times the hyperbolic cosine of the imaginary part plus i minus i of the sine of the, the the real part of the imaginary number times the hyperbolic sine of the imaginary part did you know that i didn't know <laughs> i just googled i just write i, I just wrote um uh what was it uh wolfram alpha and uh, and wrote cosine of a plus b times i and and uh, the, the and just wrote uh, Mm, no, I didn't find it like right here. Oh yeah, yeah, I did. I did find it. Yeah, basically this. I just copied uh, this and whatever, and went with it because it works for whatever reason. And um, so yeah, we we just make a library and. Just work with, uh, with, yeah, with Z and Z2 and Z1. But we need to make a little bit of analysis and the shit like that. But we just need to write down the the um, a transfer function and plug it in into the the library. And it does everything by itself because because I, at one point I was trying to find the transfer function of a band pass filter that was like uh, was built like this. Let me let me reenact uh, uh, my struggle. Like I don't see control V. And uh, let me trash this net, move it, and uh, we can uh, yeah, d d disregard the fact that I'm missing like 700 symbols in order to uh, write like ground, input voltage, output voltage. But if we assume that here it's ground, here's the input voltage, and here's the output voltage, you know, the transfer function of these was like one whole page long, and I was trying to figure out how to minimize it, like doing a little bit of algebra on it, and I was just, I said, no, I, I cannot be bothered, so I just plugged in some numbers that I found through a uh, series and parallel of impedances and just just plugged in here basically just plugged in the the the, the complex numbers so how does let, let me let me go th th uh, straight to the point here and let me explain what I'm doing with uh, this tool right now so I have let me I have two uh, three actually three inputs like I can select uh, what type of filter I want to analyze uh, the resistance and the capacitance but uh, this works only for first order uh, filters and uh, first first order filters are filters that basically only have one reactive component uh, meaning that we only have 
one capacitor and one or one inductor and please engineers of the world don't murder me because that's not the actual definition of first order filter like if you want the real <laughs> the real so the real um explanation is filters that only have one pole but then i need to explain what's a pole <laughs> and i don't remember <laughs> So, yeah, and we can select the range of uh, whatever value we put in, because since I want, I want this tool to be usable by a lot of people, I don't want people to write like 0 0.00001 in order to express like uh, milli, mi micro nano 100 picofarad because i'm lazy so i just put like a number and select the the, the suffix like and, and so in if you if you want uh i can explain like what these suffixes mean in terms of values because t is not a number so it means something but in order to make like life easier for everyone we don't just say like 10 times 10 to the 12 12th power ohms we just say 10 tera ohms or giga ohms or mega ohms or kilo ohms and basically uh you uh, if you're american you might be not used to this kind of stuff because you're not you're not like oh yeah this is one one thousand uh or one hundred kilo inches you just change unit but instead in europe since we use uh meters for example as the main unit we use suffixes in order to talk about multiples um, of of the meter like uh, mol uh, like kilometer megameter even if megameter is never used gigameter never used terameter never used millimeter it's used micrometer nanometer Picometer is mm, never used actually, and uh, so yeah. But I was making an analogy with distances since not everyone knows electrical units. So duh. But basically, if 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 you're starting with electronics you will find these suffixes in order to express this uh, the magnitude of this number like 10 uh, kilo ohms is 10 ta 10 uh, times 10 to the third power so basically 10 times 1000 mega is 10 to the sixth power so it's 1 million so 10 mega ohms is 10 million ohms giga is 1 billion one 10 billion billion ohms and tera is trillion i guess because also in europe at least in italy we use like i don't remember what's what is called but basically we go million milliard billion billiard trillion trillion instead of million billion trillion quadrillion so numbers are confusing because <laughs> and uh, yeah so the if you ever find like numbers like with m mu this is mu n p K M G T, 
yeah you need to remember like what the, what does it mean like k is uh, 10 to the third m 10 to the six uh, g is 10 to the nine and t is 10 to the 12 uh, and m is 10 to the minus three micro is 10 to the minus six n is 10 to the minus 9 and p is 10 to the minus 12. The, there are also a lot more uh, suffixes suffixes of uh, si yeah metric prefix is yeta zeta exa beta tera giga mega kilo hecto deca Deci centi milli micro nano pico fanto atto septo yotto, but those are really small. Yeah, and also long scale quadrillion, trillion, trillion, billion, billion, milliard, as I was saying before. But you're, I, I bet you, a lot of more, more people are used to the short scale. But yeah, that, that's like three, yeah. She's yeah <laughs> they they have like um cheese with um larvae like fly larvae it's and uh, yeah so uh that that was the interface. Let me three uh, basically five inputs and two graphs. But yeah, the graphs are are not the the actual meat of the of the tool because yeah because it's not it's 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 just a way to visual visualize the response. Yeah, yeah, it's it's correct, Groom. So, 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 what what am I doing here? So basically, through a JavaScript, I guess it's called the library. I don't know. I'm pretty new to <laughs> to JavaScript. <laughs> I'm basically reading the values, like I'm assigning this this variable to this uh, DOM object with ID R, and if we see here the uh, input with label R. Wait a minute. Okay, so yeah, and uh, yeah, the the uh, there's an input tag. Input basically means input whatever, and uh, <laughs> and it has an an ID or R because it's simple to connect stuff with the actual like if it's called like jesus or whatever i won't, I won't remember that that's the input for the resistance so i call it r and yeah so basically i assign uh the value the resistant value to these not actually the resistant values but the resistant dom object uh, to the to this variable here the suffix object to this variable and so on and type uh, type select is uh, assigned to the filter type that you can you can choose if you want uh, for now the first order high pass filter 
a first order low pass filter and uh, yeah so I'm using uh, I, I forgot to say that I'm using jQuery because it's simple and easy and elegant and yeah so now that I have the let's disregard this because these are uh, for the the graphs so let's not uh, let's let's uh, pretend that they don't exist in this project right now and also I assign to every DOM object that I pull from the page a an event called the change so that every time a, I change uh, the values for uh, the resistance, the resistance suffix, capacitor, uh, capacitance, capacitance suffix, and the type, I need to uh, recalculate um, the graphs if in, uh, in this example. But as I said, let's pretend that they don't exist. So now I I do the I basically go through every type in available types. What is available types? Available types is a an object, a literal object that assigns uh, the uh, this string like first order low pass filter to this other string uh, called LP one because low pass uh, first order one and this is useful because then I can make other object that use these keys in order to retrieve the transfer functions because I I bet there are a million other ways to do what I'm doing but I guess I think that what I did in here it's cool at least at least cool <laughs> that, that's what I, that's what I care about for now and also we have the uh, the suffix object that basically assigns every letter uh, T G M K uh, the dash for basically uh, zero I, I will explain why zero here uh, M mu and P with 12 9 6 3 0 minus 3 minus 6 minus 9 and 12 so and well let's go back to where I was and basically I'm appending to the uh, type select DOM object which is this select here I'm basically inserting in here uh, an option object, uh, an option uh, element in the HTML page, which has type uh, as the string inside of the tags, and type is basically this string here, as you can see here. First order, first order low pass filter and high pass filter <laughs> so um, let's go back and I do I do the same for the suffix object uh, but this time for the suffix uh, strings like uh, the, the letters T G M K dash uh, M mu and P and here, um, this thing here, it's a very cool thing. It's called a ternary operator. And it's basically, a, we can think of, we, we can uh, rewrite it in a like Boolean expression and true, false. Basically, you evaluate a Boolean expression, and if it's true, you do whatever 
whatever if true and if it's false you do whatever if false it's basically a compact if statement like if else string if uh, analog is cool um wait i need to to, to do this uh, dumb thing i need to do else in if analog is cool return because that's not true else console console dot log uh aha uh -huh, i knew it so basically we can rewrite this thing with a ternary operator by doing this analog equals cool uh true let's just say let's let's replace the return with an actual function to log no and if it's false we say console the plug aha i knew it no no it's false because because analog is false and cool is false so false equals 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 false yes of course no fuck I, f I fucked up. Analog is true and cool is false. <laughs> and yeah, so uh, this ternary operator is uh, co uh, comparing s to dash. Why? Because if it's dash, I want it to, I want the uh, option tag to be to have another um, uh, uh, property uh, attribute 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 that that's the name uh, selected so uh, let's see uh, if we is inspect the for example the suffix here the r suffix uh, input uh, whatever we see that the dash why why are you doing this to me the dash option has selected in it why because I'm because it has the dash object the dash uh, thing inside so uh, the ternary operator evaluates to true and gives us selected otherwise just put an empty string because you, you don't need to do anything mm, so yeah so this is basically the setup for the page what do we find on the page and uh, so now we come uh, to the actual thing the actual whatever of the program um, so uh, we uh, create two variable r and c that we will use in our calculations and we basically parse the value of the r value um, uh, the R value object into an, an integer base 10 in this case, but whatever, because the JavaScript doesn't care because it, all, it stores data as strings of one and zeros and it doesn't care if it's base 10, 1 million, 700, whatever. So, <laughs> and then we multiply it by 10 to the power of this thing here basically we um, we retrieve the 
value of the property of the object suffix and as you can see here uh, suffix is as uh, like t g m k uh, dash m micro mu and p as uh, uh, properties maybe i don't know and we retrieve the value with like if if i do like suffix uh dash this is equal to zero this is equal to zero because the suffix here the dash here is zero so um where i was where i was i was here and we basically uh tell javascript to uh um elevate to the to the whatever power it, it retrieves through the suffix thing here a 10 so we basically have in this particular case we have uh, 10 to the power of 0 which is always 1 every number uh, to the power of 0 is 1 but if suffix here uh, was like k that would have been 3 and 10 to the power of 3 it 1000 and that's it basically and our suffix val is basically the value it's ba it's basically one of of these it's basically uh, it's basically this <laughs> no need to add other words and uh we then uh well we we retrieve the available type the type that we selected through basically the same principle as the suffix thing and then this is the interesting part the tf variable which is actually a function because uh, we get the basically this thing transfer functions it's a an object that has inside a bunch of functions that return other functions and we can we call the basically the first function with parameters r and c and we then use r and c uh, to calculate the uh, module modules of the uh, of the transfer function at a given frequency as i said it returns it, it returns another functions another function that has like uh, as an argument f the frequency so we can calculate the frequency based on uh, like the, the the defining parameters for the filter in this case r and c and uh, yeah th th this is a bunch of math that's basically the the the, the, <laughs> the most difficult part about the the this tool but yeah once once you get in here it's basically done so and yeah in the the function when you call it with like a frequency value it returns uh, an object that contains the complex number the modulus and the argument so let's let's actually try it so and uh, let, let me go here let me do cons what the freak are you doing so let me say let f f I don't know equals to transfer functions of uh, 
the P1 and we do like uh, 10k for the for the resistance and the capacitance let's do 0 0.00 milli 0, 0 micro 0, 0, 00901 so this is 1 nanofarad and we will see that ff is actually um, it's actually a function that takes as an argument the uh, fuck, the uh, the frequency value and returns the um, the uh, complex number the modulus and the argument so now if we do ff like 1000 hertz because we will see that we get uh ooh, we get uh a complex number that has an imaginary part that this this is the value of the imaginary part the real part that has this value and uh, yeah the amplitude is 0 0.9998 wait a minute whatever so uh where was where was i yeah so um wait a minute and uh yeah so <laughs> i'm sorry uh, uh yeah we'll <laughs> so and yeah we from these values we can <laughs> we can pick up that if we take like a sign as uh, wait a minute Whatever. So, and so we we get that the uh, the amplitude of a sine wave that has frequency one thousand hertz uh, will be zero point nine nine eight per ninety nine point eight percent of the input value whatever and uh, the argument is actually in radians and uh, yeah i i actually don't know how, how my how many degrees is uh radians to degrees will be minus 3.59 degrees because everyone knows that uh, a filter uh, dampens a signal a signal but not everyone knows that it it actually introduces a phase shift so if your application is sensitive to uh, phase shift or whatever yeah you better think about it uh, but yeah I don't think that a lot of people care about it actually because at the cutoff frequency uh, we will find that the phase shift is actually uh, 45 degrees and it's it's sign depends on the the filter type for example the low pass filter it's also called according to uh, my textbook it's called a um, uh, uh, lag network 
I don't know in in Italian the the, the word for late it's actually um, associated with a bad word <laughs> so I don't want to say it in English <laughs> because people might get offended or something so I just call it lag network and uh, the high pass filter is a um, whatever the opposite of lag is <laughs> I I don't I don't remember actually the terminology for this one and we will find that uh, the for the low pass filter at the cutoff frequency the uh, phase shift phase shift will be minus 45 degrees and the uh, the amplitude will be actually actually uh, minus three decibels minus three decibels 0 0.707 something and uh, yeah it's it's pretty cool and and actually the frequency the cutoff frequency is defined to be the uh, frequency at which the signal uh, experiences a minus three decibel drop from the nominal voltage and that's pretty cool i don't remember how they went about it since the cutoff frequency is basically that one over two pi and also if you if you write two pi in javascript doesn't work i defined a variable that that uh, a constant that helps me with scripting shit and so if we if we input those values we will find that our filter that we just defined as a cutoff frequency of, a, of around 16k hertz so if we copy it and input this value into our ff thingy we will find what that the amplitude is 0 0.707 plus other figures that we don't care about and the argument is minus 0785 whatever and if we input this it should be 45 degrees minus 45 degrees so with this we know that my functions are written well <laughs> that they work not only from the fact that it's actually a pretty good graph it, it works except for like extreme values i don't know why it's, why it's like this I, I don't know but yeah we know that it works so now i uh, wanted to uh, modify this thing in order that like if i if i want to uh, if i um need to uh, design a low pass filter high pass filter and uh, i don't know i i only know the resistance that i want to use i can just uh, like put like yeah, a symbol like X inside of the capacitance field and once it and also in order to uh, make it work I need to have another field that basically tells uh, tells um, in, in which you need to uh, input the cutoff frequency that you want like imagine that you want a filter that has a uh, 1k hertz cutoff, fil uh, cutoff frequency um, you just input like a resistance 
the cutoff frequency and once you input like x into the capacitance field it just uh, it just um, calculates the capacitance for you and uh, yeah uh, and also works for resistance too maybe but also um, yeah because but also I don't uh, I don't know because knowing the pirates they just take like two capa a capacitor a resistor or actually a potentiometer and just go with it but what we can do actually is make it so that you can input uh, instead of resistance you can have like a potentiometer and you input the max value of the potentiometer and the, the nominal the max the the actual value of the potentiometer the potentiometer like uh, if you find like a potentiometer that on the back says like 4.7k uh, it automatically automatically uh, automatically uh, uh, it automatically no what, what I was saying I don't know and uh, it means that the if you turn up the potentiometer all the way you will find a resistance between the center and one of the sides depending on which uh, actually it's better to think about the maximum resistance between the uh, pin on the left and the pin on the right disregarding the center because the center is the one that varies so just think about if you if you measure the resistance between the uh, leftmost side, uh, leftmost uh, pin on the potentiometer and the rightmost pin on the potentiometer again, you will find <coughs> in this particular case, in this particular example that I just uh, told you, 4.7k. And I want to like make like a, or either a, a checkbox here that says like a potentiometer. Or whatever and you input like the max value it will just uh, spit out like another uh, another thingy here that basically tells you how your cutoff frequency varies uh, with the uh, capacity the, the, the turning of the thing whatever the thingamajig and uh, yeah that that's that's what i wanted to do and uh, so let's let's try to implement the the x thingy that you can with which you can uh, um, calculate the uh, capacitance or resistance so we need to input another uh, class our panel C panel and I can just do this C class uh, F panel because F F uh, value I don't know. 10,000 uh, for the time being uh, we will just control KS actually and if I go to here oh yeah I need to change oof I need to change the thing here uh, count of and uh, f suffix okay now if i go here and 
I need to uh, let our suffix let f value and f suffix. I can just change a bunch of letters. Control S, Control S, and uh, oops, we can see that if if I actually assign the oops, what was it? Um, oh, geez, sorry, okay. F value, F suffix, okay, okay, okay. So, I can copy this, but instead of a C, I just say F suffix. And if I do this, I will find my suffixes here. So, and also I maybe need to change the default value because 10,000, ah, that, it's fine, I don't care, to be honest, and uh, so, let me see, let, uh, well, actually, I need to, um, um if our, our value now, is equal 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 to xx and I want to do the the same for mm, mm, okay so if our value is x and c value because what I don't want is um, to have two variable, two um, parameters to be like uh, not known, not a numeric values. So, and now I want to check actually the numbers. So, else, uh, Jesus Christ, if. Uh, I can just say it's not equal to thing, but also, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I don't care. So, um, okay. Else, else, I can do this, but now. Um, I also need to modify the input. Input type number number that's not good anymore because I want uh, people to be able to uh, input uh, letters like X. <sighs> input type text, I guess. And just copy and paste it a bunch, but for F panel, I don't want it to be like X, whatever, because I can, I don't need it. Okay, so RC first int. So if if R is nan r or is nan c uh, return maybe Be because if um, if um, this value here or value is not a number and like it's not I, I maybe need to specify base 10 maybe I don't know 
Uh, so if someone like puts a uh, this parse int here will uh, return a uh, value called NAN. NAN stands for not a number. And is NAN just checks if R or T are NAN. And if it's NAN, it's, it just, it just um, exits the uh, assignment of it, it doesn't draw the body plots because I, I didn't say it before but basically uh, these plots here uh, are called body plots and yeah I, because maybe it was Bodhi that in, in, invented them and not to be confused by the Nikeist diagrams that, that, that to this day I just don't understand. Never use them. Body plots. Yeah, the basically body plots are really useful. Every time you you use uh, like the, uh, the 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 EQ in your DAW, you're basically morphing a body plot. A body plot and the uh, the points that you move around are the um, uh, the what was the name the roots maybe the roots and yeah, I don't remember the name that I used before for the um, Filter thingy, I don't remember. But yeah, this is um, uh, this is actually a a body plot body plot for a second order filter because you see there's a bump going over, and this is due to resonance and pretty cool and also the face goes from 0 to 180 and at the cutoff frequency which is kind of here maybe it's 90 degrees it's pretty cool and this resonance is used in oscillators I don't remember how but it's used in oscillators. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, so now that we have the RC, okay. So, if R value is our incognita, incognit, incognitus, we can. Um, <laughs> so what what we can do is basically let a uh, calc cut off like calc component. I don't know. Well, we can just we can just uh, like actually I want to define our and T here and then assign them here and uh, what I want to do is assign like I want T to be this and then I want to read uh, the frequency that F is equal to uh, is equal to parse int value uh, f suffix of tau and now that I have f and c uh, if you remember I told before that 
Okay, come back. I told before that uh, the uh, cutoff frequency, I don't think I did tell FC is equal to 1 over 2 pi r c and we can rearrange this equation to find resistance which is 1 over uh, 2 pi f c c and capacitance to be 1 over 2 pi fc cutoff frequency and r and yeah we can use uh, those two new equations to calculate r or c in our code so uh, we have c we have f so we can just see r equals to 1 over 2 pi times f times c and it's basically it else if our value is defined but c is not we can see c and we can just copy this here rc and uh, we can substitute this for this uh, for the r so we now have the case in which r is an incognito and uh, the x of our equation and the c value is not oh but we also need to check if uh, c is nan but you know what we can actually do this we can actually check if uh, r and c are nan outside of this if and else loop uh, loop what the did I say the if statements and now uh, what I want to do is basically if uh, r and c are defined I want actually to um, I want actually to uh, assign to value the tau um, um, I guess that I need to do uh, I guess that jQuery works like this I can just say to carry on Control S, and then let's just do some action. And then we should be golden actually. <laughs> if I say Control S here and from here, I can just say 100. Okay, nice. Okay, piano. And we have the cutoff frequency, but if I want to know uh, uh, what resistance do I need to, ooh, but I have no way of knowing actually the resistance. So, well, what I can do is uh, attach to <clears throat> to um, this thing here, 
attach another event that basically checks whether of the two are um, whether of the two are uh, the two are x and just assign the resistance value because imagine that I have like this value here uh, actually um, 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 and cannot be parsed or is out of range <clears throat> I don't know what that means so if imagine I have like 100k and I hit enter oh, I need to input the cutoff frequency so 100 hertz four. why doesn't it work um, why doesn't it work let me let me check if capacitance is crude. If R value is different from X and C value is different is equal to X, R is proximate. Okay, nice. Let me actually refresh the page. Yes. Hmm. Um, uh, 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 okay, if I do X here, I do I want hmm. We have that. I effect, I effect, I effect, I effect, wait a minute, oh yeah, I, ne I also need to change uh, this thing, and um, how do I do it? If I have like 10,000 and then, uh, and I divide it by 1,000, I get 10. And I can actually make a recursive or actually not. Because if I say, um, let's say I have a string that represents this number, and I say dot length, it's eight, it's divided by three, and percent three. So I get two. So it's something reminder two. So if I get this, so um, I can I can do actually. Let me let me do it. We're we are inventing math. Let string equals to. Uh, something like this and then if I do let um, let p for power is equal to string dot length minus string dot length modulus 3 p 
is equal to 12. But actually, 12. Wait a minute. String the plant is equal to 13. So it has 12 zeros. Let me see. Uh, one, two, three. It's kilo. One, two, three. I mean, Jesus Christ. Control C. Control V is one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So, three, six, nine, twelve. Okay. So, if I now take the parse in string times mass dot pal ten to the p divided divided by and it's one but also we we have a 12 here and we know that 12 is t and ciao alessa 12 is t so we can uh, mm, So we can write a function uh, uh, Wait a minute I guess we'll do it like, like I did Function is function uh, S note I guess of a number and uh, let string is equal to uh, parse oh and the two string I guess I can do this dot Okay, so let p is equal to string dot length minus string dot length percent three, and then I can say return. I can say like um, n is uh, I return an object called n. Uh, with a property n that contains the new number that is um, it's actually n divided by math dot power ten p and then I can just and can just oops I can just uh, return the P thingy. So, um, mm, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, Jesus Christ. Math dot dot floor. I need to floor the number. Because it's very likely that n is actually a floating thingy, pointy, whatever. <laughs> and uh, mm, yeah, let's try. Let's try. And. Um, dun, 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 dun. Um, let me do f equals 
to actually I can take cut off because I like even more cut off is equal to this then I can say uh, um, let um, fd that stands for f value is equal uh, Let's say that val equals to s notation notation of cutoff, and uh, we can update this value here with val dot n, and also we can um um. Just get key from value. Let's see. Let's see. Object to keys. Okay. Yeah, I guess. I guess this is fine. Um, what is it? Okay. And uh, we can say let um for suffix because I ran out of. <laughs> variable names suffix suffix dot key and value is val dot p it should be and if uh, yeah let, let's try and then f suffix dot um No, the child. Oof. No, I need. I need to. Okay, let let's try something. Okay, I have the. Ooh. R suffix. Okay, so if I do R uh, after R suffix. Okay, our suffix dot child. Okay, let me, let me see the, the 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 thing here. Zero child children. Okay, children. Okay, nice. Okay, I can say our suffix index zero child children okay dot for each children child maybe and uh, let me see option uh, value inner inner text inner text bridge uh, if child dot inner text equals equals t or just like try this <coughs> child dot um attribute ooh. Can I can I actually ooh child dot uh, is it is it like 
I need like a, a node. Mm. Oh, where is it? Um, no. Attributes. Hmm. Um, how do I get the what, what is it? Oh, hmm. Oh, value. I should say value. Okay. Hmm. Value part this part I don't know where is Tom or whatever first child no no class list oh wait that though Attributes name node map. So let's see a name node in the vision from an attribute object properties methods. Let's add named item. No, uh, set named item. Replace the rights, the attribute identified by the given name. Hmm. Okay. I guess I can child dot attribute. Named item at named item. Hmm. At named item, and then I guess. In the map by the given name. Yes. Obsolete. Okay, no, no. Oh, okay. That named item, I don't know. Liked it. Yes. <laughs> Let's try. <laughs> Let's try. Mm. Children is not a function. Why is not a function? I don't understand. Oh, because maybe HTML collection is not a. Yeah. HTML collection. HTML collection interface. Length item. Okay. Returns the specified node at a given zero based index into the list. There's no if the index is out of range. Uh, named item returns a specific node whose ID or uh, the fallback name matches the string specified name. Are you fucking kidding me though? What the heck? Well, what I can do actually. It's modify the way that I uh, I can actually uh, like uh, I can say like class equals to um, s I guess 
Traffic. I don't know. Let's try. The way though. Mm. Yeah, let's try. Even if I doubt that it will work, actually. Mainly because there is a mu inside of the thing. An expected token. Token what? Unexpected token where? Two one six F O Yeah, of course. Of course. Where is it? Okay. Let's see if Complaints. Let me see. So fix them. So fix you. Okay, nice. So now, what I can do is basically instead of I can um, call. This and I can just suffix and stuff, but I want it inside of mm. wait a minute though. What? What is this? Option dot suffix select our suffix select our suffix. How do I query it? Okay, so if I do select, wait, I can just select our suffix our suffix. And I can yeah, I guess I can do option of the fix this I I guess yeah 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 I can do it. Let's see. Okay. Nice, 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 nice. So our suffix. Okay, where was it? Okay, so I can say our suffix option of suffix. Okay. Dot selected. No. Dot. Um. Get attribute um get attribute selected or where is it add attribute? I don't remember. I don't remember. So I can oh that attribute is not a function. I can query a set attribute. As, oh it's the attribute. <coughs> attribute attribute values and Attribute claim um, um, 
remove. No, so no, 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 no. Uh, jQuery. Uh, um, Tom. What is it? Mm. HTML very at oh HTML CSS class attribute uh, what's that position remove attribute okay 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 nice um where is it uh, where is it out let me see if I can get away with get away with only setting one parameter. I think. Okay. Okay. Mm. Okay. Let me see. Let me see. Um, oof. wait a minute, I forgot it, I fucked up, it's not our suffix, it's a suffix, control x, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, okay, kilo, nano, it's not changed. Apple uh, selected. It's two days. But it didn't do anything. Why? Hmm. Uh, okay. Oh, action selection of option maybe. Oh, uh, now is away. The torn to selected element from list of the element. No. Uh, let select option selected by value. Um, um, No, that's not what I want. Mm. Okay, this is what I want. Oh, okay, that was way simpler than <laughs> I can just say Val. I can just say option rsf suffix. I can just say f suffix dot val suff. Maybe. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. Okay. I'm not complaining. I know. Yeah, actually, that makes sense. Yes, we did it. Nice. Yep. Because um, if I go to the value that goes zero point. Uh, the amplitude is uh, 0 0.705, which is near to uh, the 0 0.707, uh, the, the cutoff frequency. Uh, we can see that it's 1600, and the cutoff frequency is 1.59 kilohertz, which is near enough uh, 
1600 so it works and uh, yeah so if I now do uh, like 1000 kilohertz is 1 megahertz so no just don't do it okay I guess it works yeah it works oh. but yeah the resistance doesn't get updated so we now want to we now want to um, update the uh, whatever uh, field as hex x in it we want to update its value so mm, Oh, you can say our value. You can actually say our value val no our value val r and the value. I can just say that, but I'm not sure because the main thing with uh, this actually is that when I change uh, one of the fields to be X, it up it updates the uh, the calculation. So what I need to do is empty this but I cannot do it ooh <laughs> fuck you <laughs> infinity nice x not a number <laughs> yes you're fucking yeah it's it's not so what I need to do is basically what can the first fed value noun cannot be parsed okay this is this is a freaking not easy because I need to re uh, reroute everything like maybe maybe what I can do is instead of uh, change listening to change I can listen to key pressed hmm yes I can listen to key pressed Key press, key down, key up, key down, key press. Um, anyway, to the key press, handler, event, data, handler, key press, handler. What I can do is basically this key press and drop, and then I just need to change this to accept. Um, okay, um, do I need to do like key press? Draw. Do I need to do this? I I don't know. Mm, I guess. Let's try. Yeah, that's not the best. 
code that I wrote. So, yep. So, and now, what I can do is uh, if e dot um, I don't actually know a, the event thingy. Let's just print and see what what happens. Uh, let's say control the flag me control C and S event Key code, key enter. Okay, I can just check if the key is enter. So uh, I can just say if e dot e is different than enter. I just need to return. So I can, when I'm typing, I um, disregard. Yeah, I just um, I don't execute anything until I hit enter. So this way, <coughs> uh, it enables me to uh, go and modify everything. Like, I can just like say cut off frequency. I want one hundred to thousand, and I want to know what capacitor do I need if I have only one hundred k resistors. <laughs> Obviously, um, yeah. Why? Oh, hundred K. No, hundred hertz. It's NAND. Why is NAND? Why is it NAND? Capacitance. Is it NAND? Why is it NAND? What did I do wrong? Uh, if value is different from okay. And seed value is really what you expect. Seed value is E. And console the plug is T. F first int. It's kind of C and F. Control C. Um, let me console log a little bit. The value is Is it NAND? Why? 2 pi times F times C. C? No, it's not. Oh, it should be one tenth. And C is equal to 1200. X K 100. <coughs> nice. Um, 
Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> we now, uh, Jesus Christ, I'm losing the voice. Jesus actually said that. <laughs> <laughs> now I need to do the same that I did for the frequency. I need to do the same. Now, I think that it will have um, thingy magic mutation. Thingy magic mutation. Yeah, it didn't work. Why it didn't work? I don't know. Okay. Point five e minus nine. Oh, and dot one point five e minus nine dot two. Oh, two, two. One point five e minus nine. And end up to fixed to fixed zero and up to to precision. So what we have is this. No. Hmm. To exponential. I don't know what that is. Two. <sighs> Just buddy. Well, mm. if I do N times. E nine, E plus nine. Okay, no. One E nine. This times one E three. Divide it by X. Um, I don't know. Um, well, I think that I'm gonna end the stream because it's pretty late, and uh, my brain uh, is stopping right now. So I'm sorry for the stream. It's pretty bad, to be honest. And. I guess we. I'm sorry. I didn't notice that the OBS didn't have for this scene didn't have the microphone, so I was uh, talking to myself. But anyways, uh, thank you everyone for watching, and have a nice whatever. If it's night, have a nice night. If it's day, have a nice day. If it's 
somewhere in between and have a very good somewhere in between. <laughs> bye bye.